Hi, this is Nate Miller from Proving Ground, and in this video I wanted to talk about a project that recently made some headlines in early March, and that project is the Hangzhou Olympic Sports Center by MPBJ. This is a project that I was pretty intimately familiar with and involved in when I was working as a designer for MBBJ. I, I worked on and developed a lot of the original design concepts and geometry concepts here in this project and I also developed the parametric workflow and computational design tools that were used to develop the overall concept and make it something that could be built and brought into real life. So uh, the the press releases that happened early in March showed some finished photography of the project. There was a main stadium, 80,000 seat stadium, and a 10,000 seat tennis center. Both of these projects on the site involved heavy uses of computational design tools to develop the geometry and the structural design and the interior bowl design of the project. Um, and one of the things that I find really interesting about this whole story is the workflow that took place in order to realize this design. There was an early use of Grasshopper in the project. If we rewind 10 years ago, there was a press release in April of 2010, so almost 10 years exactly, that showed some of the early renderings and, and digital models of the project. Then one year prior to that, even still, was an image that was posted on the Grasshopper 3D forum. And here you see the an early rendering and you also see the early grasshopper definition that was used in the concept and schematic phase. And this particular version of grasshopper was before things like data trees and other important data structuring nodes were put into place. There were a lot of VB components to organize lofts and, and structural definitions and things like that. So early, early days of the use of Grasshopper here. I think this is one of the largest projects, uh, one of the first largest pro uh, large projects to, to use Grasshopper at, at this time. And it led to a lot of early research as well. And this early research is some of the topic I'll be talking about today, and that involves information exchange and collaborative design workflows. This is a research paper that was accepted and published by the Association of Computer-Aided Design and Architecture, the Acadia Conference. In 2010, I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to present this paper as part of those proceedings uh, at the venue in, in New York. And this paper covers the, the workflows that we used. We talk about the use of Grasshopper. I discuss how the Grasshopper definition was developed and how we implemented procedures for transferring this geometry into into Revit for documentation and also harvesting two-dimensional information for use by our collaborators that were using AutoCAD. And one of my favorite graphics, I use this graphic all the time to this day, involves this information exchange spaghetti um, that occurred on the project. So not only was there an attention to maybe the parametric definition in Grasshopper, but we needed to also understand the connection points that existed between collaborators and how data was going to flow to other environments like Revit or AutoCAD or even Excel uh, to support analysis. Um, and you can kind of see what the mess looked like. It wasn't the most efficient workflow, but it was a workflow that we had at our disposal. There weren't slick interoperability tools that allowed you to directly connect to Rhino into Revit. You had to go through file formats like ACES and you had to uh, really curate this information. And if you up needed to update information, there was a lot of manual work that went into this. So what, what I'd like to do in this video is talk about what, what this workflow might look like, might have looked like if Conveyor were implemented. And what I have here is a close approximation of the structure. I, I work this up. Uh, last night, it was done uh, quickly. I wanted to capture some of the complexity of the structure and the overall geometry, but it is by no means an exact reproduction of the structure as built, but it, it certainly has a very close set of uh, geometry, especially in the form of number of members. If I jump into this block, for example, and select the objects you're looking at, you know, 536 pipes uh, for describing this pedal, and you know there were you know multiple pedals uh, that we called them pedals these structures that, that enveloped the stadium a lot of geometry to handle and you know there was also the addition of exterior surface geometry and panelization and things like that um, 
But if I were to rewind the tape and go back to the workflows that we were using on that project, we would have selected a group of members, panels, um, and, and, and structural members like this. We would, in Rhino, have gone to the export selected and we would have chosen to export it as a DWG with solids or as an ACES file uh, with uh, the SAT uh, options available in Rhino. We would then have gone into Revit. We would have opened up a new family. We would have imported in that geometry. Um, as, and assuming that the import was successful, which in some cases it wasn't, we had to go back and rework some geometry. Uh, we would then load that family into the project, place it where it needed to be, and if there was any kind of design change, we'd have to repeat that whole process. And it was, while somewhat efficient at the time, um, if we think about the technology that's available today and the stuff that we've been developing with Conveyor, um, I really would have liked to have those tools. Um, it would have saved me an immense amount of headache and time in order to build up the integrations we needed to deliver this project. So what I wanted to show is this process of taking the model, this approximation of a portion of the stadium structure, you can see we've got those pedals there. If I go back to the um, images that we see here, it's kind of roughly describing these shapes, um, uh, then the underlying structure of these shapes, you can see that there is, there's some amazing um, structure descriptions on some of these, these photographs. Um, but if I go back into Rhino, you can see that you know there's there's some complexity there, and I want to take these into Revit. I want to you know drop them directly from the Rhino file into Revit using Conveyor. And the way that this is done is that I have a series of blocks set up. This is describing one pedal module uh, that is being reproduced here and here. We have this pedal module that's being reproduced here and here. It's kind of the mirror image. We have this infill structure here and here. We have these infill structures here, here and here. And then we have the, these uh, sub pedals here. Um, the, these, these were kind of fun because they had to integrate a stair as well. So you could actually circulate up through these into the upper level. So there's kind of an experiential component to all of this. So now that we have uh, this structural setup defined, I wanted to bring it into Revit using Conveyor. So I'm gonna jump over into the Revit environment and I already have my file set. You can see that I am selecting the Hangzhou uh, pedals file. And what that does is it loads in the, the available information. You can see that I have a series of grid lines that are defined in the file itself. You can also then see the different components. And I'm gonna go ahead and just click load objects. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna draw in the grid lines and it's then gonna go through the process of importing in the different components. So you can see there we were bringing in some of the infill pieces and pedals. Um, it's importing these and now it's going to go through a more extensive process of bringing in some of the more higher geometry blocks. So here we go, we're starting to see the population of the the other modules that have a higher member count. If you remember, there were you know, over 500 uh, pipe uh, members that were being described in, in those blocks and it's dropping them right into place. And if I think about the comparison of this workflow to the workflow that we had, this workflow that I'm executing right now, uh, which I think will take place in under a minute, um, took um, you know anywhere between uh, 30 minutes to an hour to maybe even a couple of hours, depending on the nature of the, the change that we were describing in the documentation set. But we're, with these workflow technologies like Conveyor, compressing that workflow time down into uh, a matter of minutes. And here we see that the the structure has been brought in. Um, this is a site level view, um, overhead view. So you can see the structural grids. Um, here's an elevation view that shows the, the different members. We have the different modules pulled in um, in that view. And then we have a 3D view here as well uh, to show the positioning of these. There were no issues being, bringing this geometry in. This stuff is also cuttable. So maybe I'll even jump to like level six. And level six, you can see that the the plan view is slicing the geometry and, and cutting at the, the, the designated location. So we, we have some information here that can work really well on a sheet set. And yeah, it, it you know this type of workflow is something I've been wanting to do for a long time since we started developing some of these tools was to go back to that project that really 
made me interested in the idea of workflow and see what if we had that technology on this project and there would have been a massive amount of efficiency gains by having it in place uh, to develop to deliver this this particular project and if only we could rewind the tape uh, to get to um, uh, some of those uh, efficiencies today so I thought I'd highlight this I thought it would be kind of informative to do a bit of a historical take on some of the early workflows that were done on a project that is now uh, making the headlines in the form of Finnish photography and hopefully this can inform and inspire others to think about their workflow with conveyor and other tools to make their process more efficient.